Hi, welcome back to Retro Axis. In the past few episodes, I've been exploring the Atari VCS. Uh, we've done a lot of hacking and exploring and trying to figure things out. As you guys know, I originally found that password for the BIOS, which uh, was that piano password. Um, that was uh, something that was uh, great for a little while and it certainly allowed us all to explore the system in different ways. Uh, since then, Atari has released an update to their BIOS version uh, revision 20. Uh, and that revision has actually removed the BIOS password capability. And I spent the last several days uh, trying to figure out how to get back into it and, and find the new password. Uh, and I've come to a few conclusions. So in this episode, I'm going to explore some of the things that I've done, talk to you about how I've uh, uh, learned more about the system and the new BIOS, and see if there's any way uh, we can collaborate together and maybe figure out how to break this thing open once again. Let's get started. <music> So when I wrote the script to unleash the BIOS password, uh, I provided it for you guys to be able to retrieve it on your own. I was uncertain if every VCS had the exact same password. And also in the event that Atari changed the password in the future, my assumption was we could reuse this tool. Unfortunately, what Atari has done in the new version of their BIOS is actually removed the variable entirely from the BIOS, it's no longer there, you cannot retrieve it. And it seems as though they've locked the BIOS down in a way that's unable to be unlocked. I've tried various methods to be able to do that uh, and have been unsuccessful. They've turned on something called SMM, which is a security feature of the EFI firmware that prevents you from being able to write to the firmware variables. I've used various tools, such as using uh, various ways through Linux, I've attempted to even inject a UEFI shell, which is very difficult. I'll show you how to do that here in just a second to get to a UEFI shell. I was able to load the shell and read all the variables and, and tool around with it, but I was unable to make any changes or any writable modifications. So it seems like it's locked down pretty hard. Now there is one other method, which I'll show you at the very end of this video that will show you exactly how you can do this uh, a very dangerous way, but it is still a way that you can unlock the BIOS and it has been used and proven by several others. And I'll walk you through that here at the end. Um, but let's take a quick look at another way for those of you who want to at least try and boot your systems through side loading. I'll demonstrate a method that will help you do that. So while I wasn't able to completely disable the UEFI secure boot, I did find a way to work around it to be able to load things that were unsigned. As an example, the UEFI shell, I was able to do that. So the first thing you're going to need is a USB stick with a bootable Linux operating system that supports the UEFI secure boot. In this case, I have Ubuntu, which is the latest version. I think it's 20.10. Uh, and what I will do is actually boot into this and I will show you what I had to do to make this work. Um, so the first thing is you go into the try mode to get into the live CD. So let me demonstrate that now. Okay, so here I'm at my Atari VCS. Uh, I've got a USB uh, extension cable here just to kind of hang this off the back, but I've got my Ubuntu um, USB here. I've got my keyboard, my mouse, and I've now got the system ready to go into the boot manager. So I'm gonna go into boot manager. I'm gonna select my USB and it's now going to boot. It says booting in insecure mode. Now it says that because I did use the MOK util earlier to disable it and um, I will actually disable it and show it to you again so you can see exactly how to reverse this. So we'll start with the reverse and then I'll show you how to turn it off. So first things first, I'm going to boot into just regular Ubuntu. It's gonna take just a moment to do that. So in addition to my Ubuntu USB drive, I also have a uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed uh, formatted USB drive also. And the reason I have this one is actually, this is where I installed the UEFI shell, which I was able to boot after I disabled the, um, the, the MOK util. So I'll show you that here in just a second, but I did use both and I'll explain why when I get to that step. All right, so the installer's loaded. Now you'll note that I have an option to either try or install. I'm gonna select try. And this will load a live environment that I can use without destroying any data, but it has a lot of tools. And the advantage of using Ubuntu in this situation is particularly with the live mode, is you can add additional packages and tools up to a certain amount. Uh, there is space available on the SquashFS file system to expand. So what I'm gonna do, the first thing is I'm gonna just open up a terminal. 
I'll make this full screen. Make that a little bigger. And the first thing I'm gonna do, just to show you really quickly the BIOS version on here. So if we take a look, we note the BIOS version, you notice it says VCS.20. This is the new latest version that the password's gone. The one before where I was able to retrieve that piano password was .18, so there's a big difference. So if you're curious, the first thing you should do is check your BIOS version and see which version you have. Again, I used the DMESG, the D message command, and I searched using the grep for BIOS. So if, you, if you're not familiar with Linux commands, this is how you check your BIOS version from within Linux. Now, you'll note there are two commands here. There's disable validation and enable validation. I did disable validation earlier, and I'll walk you through the steps by actually uh, re uh, disabling it or re-enabling it actually. So let me enable it first and then I will disable it again. Okay, so it's been enabled. So what we're gonna do next um, is essentially disable it. What it's going to do, it's gonna ask you for an eight digit password, eight to 16 characters, just sticking with eight. As it turns out, the Atari VCS itself is eight characters, so it works out perfectly. So I'm just gonna use that all lowercase. So we'll go to disable, validation, Atari VCS, and put it again, Atari VCS. And now what you need to do is actually reboot your system. So I'm going to reboot. And so what's gonna happen is when it goes to boot, it's now gonna ask me to verify my password, but it's a little weird the way it does this. It doesn't ask you to input the whole password. What it's going to do is it's gonna say, give me character two, give me character six, give me character three, whatever. It's gonna pick one at random and you need to basically select that character from the number it's asking for. So what I did as a hint was just wrote down below the word, the number that corresponds to the character just as a shortcut way to do it. All right, so select boot manager, boot again. Now, here you see the shim UFI key management. This is where it's going to ask us to perform management. Now, the first thing you need to do is change secure boot state. Now, notice, enter password character eight. That's gonna be S. So I'm gonna type in S and hit enter. Once character five, uh, it's I enter and it wants character one which is a disable secure boot select yes and hit enter and now we can reboot so now you've disabled it for at least the shim which is for any linux os that uses the shim mechanism to boot now what advantage does that give us well let's take a look now before i booted with an ubuntu USB. I'm going to show you now with OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, I installed another EFI binary on here and I'm going to show you how to boot that. So now under Boot Manager, I'm going to load my flash device. You'll note booting in insecure mode. Okay, now what I've done is I've created an entry here called UEFI shell. I actually didn't get this quite right, so I have to make a quick change to it, but I'm gonna show you. Here. This is where it's actually located on my disk. I'm gonna hit F10 and boom, it booted into the EFI boot. Now, some of the things that I tried using this tool uh, was to look at the variables, see if they created a new variable. Uh, this tool was something I hadn't used until, until yesterday, so I'm just getting the hang of this particular tool. But there's, there's every command here has a help. So if you're curious, 
you can type this, you know, help dump store. We'll give you some commands. So what I determined was by running this command, I can do a, a dash B and a dash all. And this will actually show you all of the variables that the system knows about. You'll notice each one here is highlighted with a, a, a bright white. So I'm gonna hit the space bar a few times to get to the next page of variables. And I'm gonna show you a couple that I experimented with. You notice this one says admin password. There's nothing in that I have looked. And secure boot in force. This was the one I was most interested in. I figured if nothing else, I could care less about the BIOS password, but if I could at least turn off secure boot, I could boot LACA or other distributions, what have you. So what I did, okay, was to take a look at it, set var, the variable name, and then the GUID, that's the location where it's stored. And you'll notice I get an, a return of zero one. That means secure boot is enabled. One is true, zero is false. So what I was hoping to be able to do, if you look at the help command for set var, it explains how you can wipe or change the variable. So I attempted to do that by giving it a value of zero. But you'll note that it says unable to set. Again, this is where I believe they have the SMM, which is called SMM. That's a feature of the BIOS enabled where you cannot make changes to it from a tool like this. So in all my attempts to do this, I was unable to make any writable changes. So let's look at this password config variable. It's in a different GUID. And you get a bunch of hex. Now you'll note that all of these are zeros. So there's no data here for you to find. All right, so here's admin password. You'll note it's also a single byte as zero one. Again, you cannot modify it. Unable to set. So this is how I tried to explore unlocking it for the second time. Unfortunately, it looks like everything's locked down with the SMM EFI BIOS feature. So uh, that's it for being able to do that. But what I did demonstrate to you by using this method of, uh, of side loading, you're able to actually through Grub, maybe perhaps you can set up a, a menu system using a USB um, system like this, edit the Grub config file, add your entry for your other system and get back into your uh, non EFI operating system that you've installed. So perhaps this is a great workaround for those of you out there who want to get back to it. Um, so try this method and see if it works. Now, the last thing I wanna show you all is a method that uh, I found on the Atari Age forums. I, don't, I have not personally tested this, um, but I'll walk you really quickly through that. So let's take a look at this last method. So the last method that is available to uh, get your BIOS cleared, uh, it won't actually remove the password, but it will get you into the BIOS menu, at least according to this post. Uh, a gentleman here uh, by the name of Charles Darwin, at least that's his alias on Atari Age forums, uh, found a way to short the motherboard, specifically the BIOS chip using like a paper clip or you know two metal leads. Um, there may even be a way to use a button. I was thinking about maybe making it a push button um, through a switch or something like that. Uh, but essentially what you do here is, uh, and I'll show you a zoom in here, uh, there's these two red dots on this particular chip and at the right time, you actually short this out uh, as you're loading the BIOS. So the system's running, um, there is a danger that you could fry your motherboard if you slip up or you have shaky hands or you hit the wrong connectors you could potentially brick or, or completely destroy your Atari VCS. So it's a highly risky technique. Um, I don't recommend it for those of you who are not comfortable doing it. Uh, it's certainly not something I would normally suggest, but if you absolutely have to unlock your BIOS for whatever reason, this seems to be the only current way to do it. Hopefully Atari will actually decide that it's in the best interest of their uh, customers and, and community to open this thing up and stop password protecting the BIOS. I can understand that, you know, right now, perhaps, you know, this is kind of a beta test, if you will, and they don't want people screwing around. But honestly, this is the best time to let people mess around and, and fool with the system. So I'm a little surprised that they're being uh, so uh, lock and key with this thing, um, but it is what it is. 
So really, you know, for me, it kind of ruins the Atari VCS experience. You know, they're saying this is supposed to be, oh, it's, you know, it's a con game console with a PC mode. Um, well, it really kind of doesn't give you very good PC mode if you're very limited in what you can install. Um, you know, Windows is great. There's plenty of capabilities and certainly some of the signed Linux operating systems are good. But, you know, other videos where people have opened up the system and, you know, tuned the GPU, uh, added additional VRAM, uh, even done some performance tuning of the CPU by overclocking it. Um, those are great things that people want to do with their system. And by blocking that out, um, essentially, you're not going to make this an interesting console for anybody. I'm more inclined to go buy one of these Lenovo Thin Clients. It's a very small form factor. I've already got one of these. This is a Core i5. Great capabilities. It's got tons of slots, USB, HDMI, built-in Wi-Fi. I mean, it's got just as much capability, if not maybe more, than the Atari VCS. And to be honest, after you've bought your controllers, your remotes, and all those things, you're in for the same amount of money for one of these than you are for an Atari VCS. So, you know, at this point, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a VCS system that's still running BIOS 18. I have not booted it into uh, the, the Atari OS and it has not been updated. Um, but, you know, the other one that I have, I did update to version 20. And so there's a difference, uh, certainly, between my ability to use these the way that I want. Um, so I'll probably never reboot my uh, version 18 back into the Atari OS ever again. Uh, and as for this one, I mean, this will probably just be an Atari VCS if I decide to keep it. I'm not even sure I want to keep it, to be honest. It's not very compelling and interesting to me as a game console. So I really do believe that this system is not worth investing in. I don't see this becoming a platform that people will like and embrace. If I was a developer making a game, what's my incentive to make a game exclusively for the Atari VCS? Probably not much. Uh, most of the games that I've seen are all, you know, most of them I've seen are Unity based games. Those are available on almost any other platform. You can get them on mobile. They're available on Steam. So really not a very compelling case in my opinion for the Atari VCS. So I'm going to put mine on the shelf for a little while. It's been a lot of fun experimenting with it. In my next uh, series, what I'm going to do is talk more about Linux distributions. Uh, one of the things I really enjoyed th during this series was installing various Linux operating systems and testing them out and getting, you know, RetroArch and other things working and really experimenting. And so I felt that, you know, I had a lot of people asking, asking questions uh, in the Discord server and in the comments below about getting help with their Linux operating systems. And so I thought perhaps a series on that might be interesting. So stay tuned. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, put some more comments down below, like, share, and we'll see you next time on Retro Axis.